Hello, BookTube. I've got some mail for you today on an absolutely beautiful, warm, sunny, midsummer day. Just gorgeous. The, the early morning walks were beautiful. The afternoon has been beautiful. Although the walks have to be a little bit more leisurely, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit more uh, slower and lazier because there's no use overheating. Uh, I think this is this is the last few days that this beautiful, picture perfect summer weather will be here. Uh, here in Boston before a string of genuine heat arrives. Nothing like the heat that's baking the rest of the country. Uh, this will be, I, th I think, in the 90s Fahrenheit, low 90s Fahrenheit, but it will, I, pre I predict it will persist over the course of a solid week. Uh, so still 30 degrees cooler than the rest of the country, but that will still be uh, the first genuine long heat wave that we've had. I mean, it, technically, in 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 meteorological terms, at least for the Boston area, a heat wave is three consecutive days where the daytime high temperature reaches 90 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Uh, but if you reach 90 degrees Fahrenheit even on a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday, and then it cools off right down into the 70s again, nobody really thinks of that. A heat wave is, it has more an element of inescapability, <laughs> of unendingness. And I think one of those is coming. For Boston it won't make much of a difference. This uh, this little book room is extremely clement in terms of temperature. Whether you have the little AC unit on or not, it's extremely nice just all around around the year. Probably because it's so heavily insulated <laughs> with shelves and shelves of floor to ceiling books. Uh, but anyway, we've got some mail. We've got some some packages, and uh, some of them are a little odd. Some of them give off an odd feeling. Uh, so let's let's start with this first one, which is an Amazon Prime envelope. Uh, so that leads me to think it's one of you. Is that right? Oh, it is one of you. Yes, it is one of you, and I know what this is. Uh, this is uh, rule number two here in this jar. No, or is it rule number three? I don't remember. Uh, rule number one on this little booktube channel, the little booktube channel that could, uh, is don't send me a book. <laughs> you love books, and I love books, and you know that I love books, but don't do it. Don't send me a book. It will be a bad idea. It will hark me back to the year that I got 30-something copies of John of David McCullough's biography of John Adams from 30-something well-wishing people. 30 copies, a whole box, a whole shipping crate of the same book. It'll hark me back to that. I uh, have a lot of books because I love books. And because I love books, and because I've loved books for a long time, uh, I know what I want, and I know what I don't want. <laughs> so, uh, rule number one is don't send me a book. But I can't remember how, the, the way that I ordered rule numbers two and three. Uh, one of those rules is that Steve is always right. Uh, but the other one is send me your old tech. Definitely send me your old tech. And of course, rule number one, don't send me a book, doesn't apply to ebooks. You could send me as many ebooks as you want. Uh, and uh, this person uh, sent me some old tech. I don't think I that I remember the specifics. I remember the person's name. Uh, yeah, we've got a power cord here, so it's definitely tech. I don't think I remember the specifics. Uh, so let's see, let's see what we can find here. What is this? Well, it's small, whatever it is. Uh, Make sure we don't have any. I, the feng shui here is, is a nightmare. It's just I, it's just a question of I hurl stuff onto the floor, and then when I'm done, I clean up. Uh, oh, my. Oh, goodness. That's right. I remember this. Uh, this is uh, an Amazon uh, tablet. Uh, is this going to have any power? Maybe not. No, it does have a little power. This is an Amazon tablet from a few years ago that is notable mainly for one thing. I mean, it's a it's a it's a an, a small Amazon Fire tablet, which is their color tablets. You you've seen me. I've had a few of them over the years. I have. Ha I say have, but all my tech is gone. All my tech is under tarps or you know, uh, lost in bins or covered in, in taped over boxes or whatnot. I only have what's in this room. Uh, so once upon a time, I had a larger Amazon uh, Fire tablet, their color tablet. It's their, it's their Amazon's answer to the uh, the iPad. 
Once upon a time, I had one of those, the larger one, the 10-inch one, and I also had, as I imagine a lot of you have, the 6-inch Amazon Fire tablet that is uh, Amazon's answer to the iPad Mini and one of their best-selling devices. It's, it's kind of amazing, even if you buy one new. If you get it on, for instance, Prime Day or wait for some sort of discount, you can get a really good, well-built, powerful little Android-based tablet for very little money. For a third, what you would pay for similar specs in, for instance, just a straight-up Samsung or something like that. And it's, it's not all that hard to make it a straight-up Android tablet. It's not all that hard to dig into it and root it, strip the Amazon skin off it, that sort of thing. Uh, I've had both of those, the larger Amazon Fire and the smaller Amazon Fire, but this one... This is different. This is uh, the smallest Amazon Fire that they've ever made. I don't know if you can see. I don't know that I have any example to show you. Here is a mass market paperback. And here is this. It's, it's actually smaller than a mass market paperback. I have never had, aside from cell phones, I've never had a... a an electronic device that was this small. This literally does fit in the palm of your hand. Amazing. Okay, so you've got the nice, solid, blockish uh, delivery there. The headphone jack there. You've got the, the power cord up there. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, Amazon is holding to the line here. Very minimal uh, side fussiness. You've got the volume controls on one side over here. But there's very little in the rest of it. The rest of it is clearly designed for you to hold it. So the, the one thing you don't want if you're going to be holding this device on its edges is anything that you could accidentally activate. So those edges are clean. Um, and what have you got up here? The headphone jack, the battery indicator, power button, and the, uh, and the uh, charging socket there. So very interesting. I wonder what this will be like. I wonder what it will be like uh, to use a device this small. Will I will I fall in love with it? Uh, wow, I don't know. Fantastic. Uh, okay, well this is this is okay. So that's what this is. This is. Uh, let's see how this works here. So I have a you know this is a perfect example of you sending me your old tech. I've never had one of these things before. I will play around with it, and maybe it will become my new favorite thing. <laughs> I mean, it is smaller, a good deal smaller than an iPad Mini. It's it's a just about, just a tiny bit, maybe an inch around, bigger than the biggest new uh, maximum size iPhones. What, the iPhone 12 um, Max, the, the larger size of the iPhone 12, wouldn't be that much smaller than this thing. Very nice. Very nice. So, um, it, it did have power, uh, but I'll charge it up anyway. Uh, so, this, it charges the power cord up on the top, is that right? Yes. And the nice thing about, uh, about this thing is that, uh, as I've learned with other tech that I've received, uh, it's going to immediately recognize my, my Amazon Kindle library. So once I get this thing set up, it's going to come with, it's going to have a huge number of books on it. Great. Fantastic. We'll see. Will I use it to read or will I use it? You know, I can't imagine using it for anything else. I mean, I wouldn't want to watch a screener on something that small. Uh, I don't know. Fantastic. Thank you very much. The sender. That is wonderful. That is rule number two or three. Definitely send me your old tech. Uh, then we have, uh, a box. This is from a publisher, so it will not be, it will not be tech. Publishers don't send me tech. Uh, let's see what this is. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. I think we might have seen this already. This comes out in early August. This is by David Hone, the great David Hone. Have I got a picture of him? No. Uh, but he's a paleontologist who is fantastic, and he is synonymous with one particular extinct animal. Uh, and this book is about that. How fast did T-Rex run? unsolved questions from the frontiers of dinosaur science. <laughs> uh, uh, what do we got here? And we, some of you remember, maybe some of you have read The Dinosaur Heresies by Robert Backer from 
30, 40 years ago, something like that. Delightful dinosaur book, just delightful. <laughs> Actually gets a mention in Jurassic Park. Uh, and one of the things that, that Backer writes about in that book is how fast did T-Rex run? How fast were these creatures? And he makes the excellent point in that book that it all depends on how their legs were arranged, on how their, what, what did it look like when they ran? Were their legs going forward in a, in a groove, or were they paddling along the sides like a Komodo dragon does? And would that affect their speed? Uh, so what have we got? Yeah, this comes out in early August. Uh, in just the past 20 years, we have learned more about dinosaurs than we did in the previous two centuries. This book describes the extraordinary advances in paleontology that are beginning to solve many of the mysteries surrounding these marvelous prehistoric creatures, from their ways of communicating to their mating habits, the color of their skin, their migration patterns, and extinction. How did dinosaurs rear their young? Why, what did they eat? What did T-Rex actually do with those tiny arms? <laughs> did David Holm draws on his own discoveries at the forefront of dinosaur science to illuminate these and other questions. Fantastic. Just fantastic. Uh, I've recommended David Hone before to you. Uh, where am I going to put this? Oh, no, I don't want to crush my new baby. <laughs> Let's put that there. Uh, I've recommended him before to you. Uh, mainly, there's a lecture that he gives that's on YouTube about T-Rex and about what we can learn just from what we see in the fossils. Uh, and it's fascinating. Just fascinating. Uh, great. All right. Well, a dinosaur book. So we're off to a fine start here. I love me some dinosaur books. <laughs> they can't all be dinosaur books, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Let's see what this next one is. No, the next one is from the folks at Minotaur Books. Uh, this is June 26th. This came out, so almost a month ago. Uh, this is The Unkept Woman by Alison Montclair. Kind of a stylish cover there. Uh, let the fourth book in the critically same Sparks and Bainbridge mystery series, filled with the crime intrigue, undercover hijinks, and likely deadly paramours, this may be the most thrilling look at the fascinating lives of our favorite secretive marriage brokers yet. I think I remember that name. I think we saw the first one of these on this channel. Uh, Let's see here. The setting is London, 1946. Miss Iris Sparks, currently co-proprietor of the Right Sort Marriage Bureau, has to deal with aspects of her past exploits during the recent war that have come back to haunt her. The Right Sort Marriage Bureau was founded in 1946 by two disparate individuals, uh, Mrs. Gwendolyn Bainbridge, whose husband was killed in the recent World War, and Miss Iris Sparks, who worked as an intelligence agent during the recent conflict, though this is not discussed. While the agency flourishes in the post-war climate, both founders have to deal with some of the fallout that conflict created in their personal lives. <sighs> okay, great. Well, this is late getting to me, so I'll put it on the list for tonight. In fact, since we're at the middle of July, uh, I'll probably read the David Home book tonight, too. Uh, this is just another example of my mail halls creating my TBR, although there are other factors involved in tonight's TBR, not the least of which is a new piece of tech. Which is always a lot of fun. Uh, that'll, that'll suck down some time, but that's all right. I've got lots of time. So uh, let's move on to this next one here. Uh, what have we got here? Finished copy of something. Okay, this is also from Soho. We've already seen this. This is Shudder by Ramona Emerson. Is this her debut? Uh, yeah, this is her debut. I remember, I remember if, if I remember correctly, we not only talked about this book when I got it, the advanced copy, but I read you a bit of it so that we could see what it was like. Uh, and I believe the responses out there were mostly positive. If I remember correctly, the opening scene is grisly, but quite gripping. Uh, let's see here. Drawing on her own upbringing in the New Mexico Navajo Nation, as well as her experience working with the Albuquerque PD as a forensic photographer. Remember that? Remember the forensic photographer? We read about this. Uh, I read you a chunk of this. And uh, not only did a lot of you like it, this, this is author's debut work, but a lot of you liked what you read, enough to put this on a list, enough to, you know, remi remind yourself when it was coming. But also, quite a few of you rather charmingly said that you would like it if I read you more from more new releases. In fact, a couple of you, uh, the last time when this happened, it's all coming back to me now, a couple of you said, you know, you wouldn't get in trouble with authors if you did that, because samples of their books are already available online. There's no, there's no problem with reading it out loud. <laughs> so maybe I need to consider that. 
maybe we should read the first few pages of a lot of the books that we get in the mail. That might be something fun. Uh, uh, but anyway, she draws on those things to offer a debut novel like none other. A lush depiction of life on the reservation, a southwestern police-slash-crime cartel that draws from real cases Emerson observed, and a rich celebrity catalog of Diné culture as told through the, the point of view of an unforgettable girl next door who was forced to turn superhero to seek justice for the underserved. Okay, well, do we have a date on this? Uh, August 2nd. Okay, this is also August 2nd. So this has been sitting on, the advanced copy has been sitting on my shelf for a long time and is now completely inaccessible to me. <laughs> so I'm glad I have the finished copy. It'll stay right in here. Uh, sooner or later, I am going to experience space problems in this little room, but <laughs> not right away. Uh, and then we have uh, the finish up. We have a great big box here. Uh, it's not giving off uh, the vibe of a book. It's not doing that. So maybe this is uh, also a violation of rule number one. <laughs> Although I shouldn't say also, because the first one is this this, in this incredibly cute little Amazon Fire. Uh, what have we got here? Oh yeah, this is definitely uh, this is definitely not a book. Or if it is, it's it's definitely not from a publisher. Uh, it's too well packed to be from a publisher. <laughs> It's just uh, piled in. What on earth is this? All sorts of packing here. But this is the thing itself. Oh, <laughs> okay. We're ending as we began. We're ending with old tech. Another one of you sent me an old piece of tech. <laughs> an iPad. Uh, okay. Fantastic. So, it's an iPad. Uh does it have any power? It does. Okay, so this came, uh, the iPad and the case uh, that goes all around it. So some of you have commented uh, over the years looking at my at my tech that it seems like I mostly prefer it without any cases, without any coverings of any kind. A few of you have commented over the years that that seems a little odd considering that I am uh, a little rough with my stuff. Why wouldn't I encase everything I have in armor? And I've done that before with iPads and MacBooks and whatnots, and for me, it ruins the aesthetic. I know that's a dumb thing to say, but it, it does. For me, it ruins the aesthetic. I, uh, I'll do it if I'm, if I'm using the thing constantly, or if, for instance, in the case of my iPad, it has a smart keyboard, and the smart keyboard is the cover to my new iPad, the one that I use all the time. That smart keyboard is connected to the iPad, and it makes it into a, a typing machine, so... Uh, Oh, wait, we had life, but then, oh, it went away. Okay, here it's back. Here it's back. So what is this? <laughs> You've got the, the cloud of languages going by. Which language do you want? Oh, my. I want English. Oh. Uh, I want uh, the United States. <laughs> wow, this has to be an old iPad, uh, or it wouldn't be doing anything like this the way it is. Yeah, this isn't. This has to be an old iPad. So I wonder if it will if it will tell me uh, what it is. Let's let's take a look. Let's see if we can. Uh, Let's see if we can get it to talk about itself. No? No, it's not going to. It's at 100% power, but it's not going to let me uh, know anything about it until I've completely set it up, which I'm not going to do. Let's see if we can take it out of its case and figure out on our own what this is. Uh, it comes out of the case nice and easy. That's good. Uh, Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, obviously this was, you know, that was the personal stuff that someone painted over it with nail polish. Uh, but you can tell already from the sides, from the size of this thing, 
uh, from the 16 pin power cord there, uh, one speaker. Yeah, one speaker at, at, at the bottom, uh, power control and uh, the on and off switch there on the side, uh, headphone jack at the top. Uh, you can tell a lot just from the physical chassis of this thing. I bet this is an iPad original. I bet this is a first a first uh, edition, a first generation iPad. I bet that's what this is. It's not going to let me know that until... Uh, until I've set it up, so I can't give any details, but what a pretty thing. Uh, I have a first-generation iPad, but it, it's it's gone. First of all, it's completely buried, completely inaccessible to me. And second, it's uh, it's plastic white. It's not space gray. It's not. It doesn't look like this. It doesn't have this feel to it at all. Well, this is a solid thing. Okay, well, it's 16 gigs. It's at 100%, so I will... Uh, just to be just to be on the safe side here, so that, you know, I know it's easy come, easy go, but I don't want to lose it right away. Let's put it in the uh, back in the case right away. The case you you just stick this thing in, the Velcro holds it in place. Nice, nice. Uh, the case has a magnet up on the top, but it does not seem to be working to wake or sleep the device. Uh, that's okay though. This will help me to distinguish it from other things until I can set it up and figure out what it is and what it will do. Uh, the I mentioned the other day that the iPad second generation, uh, which was my original iPad and which I used forever and ever, took a ton of pictures with it, watched a ton of videos, uh, made some videos, did a ton of writing on that iPad second generation. You wouldn't think it would be true. I didn't use a Bluetooth keyboard of any kind. I just wrote on the machine and ne I didn't mind at all. <laughs> Not in the slightest. I couldn't really ever quite get to the point with the, the native keyboard that comes up on the screen. I couldn't quite ever get to the point of multiple finger typing, but I could do two or three fingers. Uh, and that worked. It worked really well. <laughs> it got up to really good speed. I put a lot of use into that iPad second generation. Uh, and I mentioned the other day that I found recently a video asking, you know, some Zoomer asking, is it even possible to use this ancient piece of technology in 2022? God only knows what those types of YouTubers would say about using the original iPad, which is what I think this is. I don't... The square build there and the the, the uh, power cord pin configuration leads me to think this is the first generation iPad. And, you know, when it comes to using old technology like that, I am largely saved by the fact that I am not a, a, a heavy complexity user. I mainly want my iPads to do pretty much what I want my my handheld devices like this thing. Although this is a million times more complex than, than this, uh, I I pretty much want them to maybe show me some things passively, show me Instagram or Twitter or my Gmail my Gmail, or uh, I want to compose prose on it, a word processor. <laughs> Basically, it requires I, what I what I want out of this technology requires less out of it than anything else you could want. So so oftentimes, I will baffle the predictions of the videos that say, just don't get one of these things. You're not going to be able to use it. I'd be willing to bet that this thing will download books or sideload books. Or maybe not sideload, but download books. I'd be willing to bet that this will do that. Uh, in which case, what do I care? <laughs> you know, What do I care if it can't play Minesweeper? If I can put a thousand books on it, 16 gigs, if I can put a thousand books on it and ha just have them there, uh, why not? <laughs> you know, why not have them there as a reading device? Who knows? I might find, you might find that I like the feel and the heft and the, the borders better. I now have two choices here, two things to explore. Uh, I noticed that this iPad didn't come with a power cord, but that's all right. I have plenty of power cords. I'm sure that I have one that fits this. Uh, great. Okay. Well, that's the mail. Not one, but two old pieces of tech. Uh, an old iPad and an old, very small Kindle Fire. The smallest Kindle Fire. How fascinating. I wonder, in both cases, I wonder what that will be like to use. <laughs> well, I'll give it a try. I'll put time aside today to do it. Uh, and then we have uh, three books. Uh, two mysteries and, well, three mysteries, really, but one is nonfiction. We have Shudder by Ramona Amerson, which is her debut. Uh, we have The Unkept Woman uh, by Alison Montclair. Fourth book in a series. We'll see. Uh, I don't think, I don't think I've any, read anything but the first book in the series. So 
It'll be up to Alison Montclair to get me up to speed. Uh, and finally, How Fast Did T-Rex Run by David Hone, uh, which it doesn't just address that subject. I'm sure it will address lots and lots of dinosaur-related subjects, but fine by me. <laughs> fine by me. I may read all of these books uh, tonight, and I will also be playing around with this device <laughs> tonight. So thank you both. The people who sent these things that is wonderful these things now have loving homes <laughs> so and especially especially pointed poignant melancholy loving homes because i was only able to grab just so much tech to bring it in here before the home construction apocalypse the homey apocalypse struck everywhere else so i don't know where all of my old tech is i just have to play with and use i just have what's in this room uh, so, <laughs> all the more welcome. <laughs> so, thank you very much. I'll wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll see you soon. Thank you, Book 2.